I just finished a long day of teaching my students on Blab. So I own Blab, which is a service that helps people build confidence to speak English. It's mainly aimed at people who have some knowledge of English, people who can put sentences together, but they just feel blocked. Like they get intimidated when they have to speak to a native or someone who is fluent um, and they just can't think of the words fast enough. Uh, they understand everything, but they just can't keep the conversation going and they feel a bit, they feel that confidence disappearing because of that. So these six tips are supposed to make you feel more confident when you have to speak to a big group of people. Or maybe you are living in an English speaking country for the first time or you're having to speak English at your job for some reason and you just feel so intimidated that you can't say things and you can't participate in the conversation uh, that you're having. A lot of people start conversations by saying sorry for my English and I understand that you're just trying to give yourself the right to make a mistake without feeling self-conscious but I think it's very problematic for a number of reasons. I think first of all you set the bar very low for yourself. Um, I mean it's okay to make mistakes, I'm not saying that you shouldn't make any mistakes when you're speaking English uh, but you should try not to. That's how you improve, right? When you, you're thinking and you're speaking in a way that you're trying your best not to make mistakes, you're gonna make them, it's absolutely fine. But when you say, sorry for my English, it's you, you kind of like give, give up almost. Like you just go like, yeah, well, I said sorry for my English so I can speak whatever way I want. I don't need to make an effort here. I think as well for the other person who is listening to you, it kind of changes their expectations about that conversation. So maybe they will, talk differently to you, they will dumb down their English, which is horrible. If you're trying to learn, you want people to speak naturally so you can pick up new words, you can pick up new expressions. You don't want people to be talking to you like this because you understand it. I mean, this is not the case that you have a very basic level of English, right? You know English, you can understand them. You don't need them to dumb down their English, but when you apologize for it uh, at the very beginning, I feel like people then start uh, lower, lowering their expectations of you when you are absolutely capable of maintaining a conversation with that person. So what should I say instead? Because I understand when I'm speaking Italian, especially in a professional environment, I feel very self-conscious uh, that I am going to make mistakes and I kind of want to adjust expectations there. I try not to uh, address my level of Italian when I start every conversation. Uh, but if I have to say something, I will say something like, yeah, so I speak Italian very well, I studied for years, you know, sometimes I forget a word or two, but yeah, we, we can speak Italian, it's fine. You see how, like, it still gives you a bit of the right to make a mistake, like, it, it makes you comfortable to make a mistake, and it prepares the other person for the mistakes that you, you're going to make, but it doesn't bring yourself down. It's like, yeah, I, I speak English very well, uh, sometimes I forget a word because I, I haven't practiced in a few years, but I can speak it. Yeah, let's speak English, let's, let's talk in English. So that's a much better way to start a conversation if you want to address your level of English in the beginning of the conversation, which you don't have to. Uh, it's a much better way to do it than apologizing for your English. Another tip to forget a word like a native. So I am in Italy right now um, and I have studied Italian for years, but I haven't practiced for years as well. So my Italian is quite rusty. Um, and a lot of the times when I'm speaking to people, um, I forget a word. I can say things, I know the grammar, I can continue a conversation, but I forget words all the time because I just don't use them anymore. So my tip for you in these situations, if you go through the same thing in English, is to just deal with it in the same way that you deal with forgetting a word in your native language. So we forget words in our native language all the time. It happens. Sometimes your mind goes blank and it's normal. So don't make a big deal out of it. Just weave it nicely into the conversation. So I'm gonna give you an example. So say I am talking about a job that I had in England and that I resigned it, which means basically I quit the job, right? Um, so I, I can say, so I'll be talking to the person and I'll be saying, well, you know, so I lived in England for seven years, uh, had a job there, but then I, um, gosh, what's the word? Um, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're working in a place, but then you kind of decide not to work there, but it's not like the company kicked you out of there, you decided. 
Yes, resign, that's it. So the other person might help you by giving you the word or you, you, the, the other person might just understand what you mean. You can also say something like, um, like yeah, so I, I used to live in England for seven years and I had a job there, but then um, the word isn't coming to me now, but you know, I, I, I had to leave the company. I decided to leave the company and do other things. So just make it very natural, don't panic. It happens all the time, even in your native language. And something that happens as well with me here in, in Milan when I'm speaking Italian is my, I don't, I can't say things as quick as, as I would like, um, or as quick as my thoughts go. Um, so a good tip for that is to use filler words and filler words are used by natives. You do it in your native language for sure all the time and it just gives you a little bit more time to think and maybe it also slows down the conversation a bit because when you're just starting speaking in like a natural environment you don't want to have fast-paced conversations because it's difficult it will discourage you so words like like it's a very good one so if you're saying yeah so uh, today i i wanted to go to the restaurant but then like um uh, it rained, it rained, so I couldn't do it. So you see, maybe I forgot the word rained or I forgot what I wanted to say. So I just said like, um, you know, it's very na natural. It gives me a couple of extra seconds. It slows down the conversation. Very nice way to do it. A lot of the times as well, what happens to me, somebody says something and I agree with it, but I, and I want to compliment it and I'm very eager to do it because I have a lot of thoughts in my head, but I need time to think. So um, in English, you can use several different words. One that I like to use a lot is, yeah, 100%, 100%. So maybe somebody said something like, um, you see, I, I am thinking about what I'm going to say next. So I just said like, um, you see, without panicking, it's fine. I'm just gonna think about it. I'm gonna edit this out. So if somebody, you're planning a trip maybe, and then somebody says, I think you should rent a car. I think that's the best decision. And then you want to say more about how you agree with that and how, what, how you're going to do it. So maybe you can just go, yeah, 100%. Then have a think about it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. And then you can have a few extra seconds to think. You can also say, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it just gives you a bit of extra time to, to think about what you're saying without making the conversation seems a bit robotic. But it might also be the case that you don't agree with what is being said and, and you need a bit of time to build that argument in your head. Um, so you can just say, yeah, but, but you know what? Think about it and say what you wanted to say. You can also say, yeah, but you know, I don't, I don't agree, I don't think, and then you can evolve, you know. And also, I mean, choosing the groups of people that you're going to speak to is very important. So here in Italy, um, when I see people like in large groups, I noticed that I can't keep up with the conversation. Uh, I understand everything that is being said. I study Italian for years, um, but I can't speak fast enough. And in large groups of people, the subject changes all the time very quickly and you won't be able to keep up probably. And this will discourage you. It will make you feel less confident um, and we don't want that. So I would say maybe try to avoid large groups of people if you can. Try having smaller groups of people, individual conversations. The speed is better for somebody who is still learning the language and still building confidence to speak a language that they already know. And finally, if you guys speak another language in common other than English, try your best not to open that door to allow the person to speak to you in another language. So giving my example here in Italy, a lot of the people where I'm living, they speak English. Um, so sometimes they can see that I am struggling to say something in Italian and they say it in English because they think they're helping me. They think like, well, she, she can only speak English better than she can speak Italian. So I'm going to say in English to help her. But I don't want that. I want to practice. I want to struggle because this is how I'm going to learn. Um, so whenever they speak to me in English, I respond in Italian and they might keep doing that for the entire conversation. I will always respond in Italian, even if I say it wrong, even if I think I have to think about it, even if I am tired, 
and I have, I am like, oh my god, I just want to speak English because it's so much easier. I speak Italian because once you start responding in another language, maybe it's your native language or maybe in my case it's English, um, you open that door and then they will always, the moment they see you struggle a little bit, they will start speaking to you in that other language that you two can speak. And that's not very good for someone who's trying to improve their confidence. So I hope you guys appreciated these tips. Um, a lot of it was based on my personal experience, but also these are tips that I share with my students on Blab all the time. Uh, so if you want to sign up to, to Blab, you can just go on the website, which is uh, linked in the description. It's blabenglish.com. Um, and we basically do 45 minute sessions about topics that are interesting. There's no boring conversations in, on Blab. And I'm always encouraging my students to improve, to speak their minds. There's no treating you like you don't know the language. I'm not gonna give you an easy time. It's about really challenging you and making it just a little bit hard. So you improve your spoken English and you feel more and more confident every day.